Arthritis is something that is afflicting many people today. It's inflammation of the joints. There is rheumatoid arthritis and it's probably a little bit more serious. And there's also osteoarthritis and arthritis. Also a similar condition which probably afflicts men mostly is gout. So what I'd like to look at in this presentation is what's the cause of arthritis? So if you can increase the blood supply to any part of the body that's not working, arthritic joints, arthritic toes, arthritic joints anywhere in the body, if you can increase blood to that area, you will increase healing in that area. Over 54 million adults in the US suffer from arthritis. But what if your pain isn't just caused by genetics or diet? In this eye-opening video, Barbara O'Neill reveals seven hidden factors that could be silently worsening your arthritis. From unexpected toxins to everyday habits you never thought twice about, these surprising causes could completely change how you manage your condition. Imagine unlocking the key to reclaiming your mobility and energy. Don't let these hidden dangers keep you in pain. The truth could transform your life. Watch now and take control of your health. Barbara O'Neill says that arthritis thrives in an acidic body environment, which disrupts overall health and accelerates joint inflammation. And water is an alkalizer. We're going to look at foods in a minute. We're going to look at the foods that have an alkalizing effect and the foods that have an acid effect. And waste is acid. So getting blood into the joints of an arthritic or a gout person, you're immediately bringing in two powerful alkalizers, which is the oxygen and the water, and you're carrying away one of the biggest acidic forming substances, which is waste. Every body fluid in our body should be alkaline, and it, and it is except for the stomach. She emphasizes the critical importance of maintaining an alkaline balance in the body to manage and prevent arthritis symptoms. According to her, an acidic environment contributes to the deposition of uric acid crystals in joints, triggering pain and stiffness characteristic of arthritis. This imbalance is primarily influenced by dietary and lifestyle choices. Barbara O'Neill highlights that consuming acid-forming foods, such as processed meats, refined sugars, and dairy, can significantly increase the body's acidity, exacerbating inflammatory conditions like arthritis. She advocates for an alkaline diet, rich in vegetables, fruits, legumes, and seeds to help neutralize excess acidity and support joint health. Additionally, she notes that hydration plays a crucial role in maintaining an alkaline state, as water aids in the excretion of toxins that contribute to acidity. Barbara O'Neill also suggests reducing stress, which can increase acidity through the release of stress hormones that upset the body's pH balance. Exercise is another key element she discusses, as physical activity stimulates circulation and the removal of acidic waste products from the body. Insufficient oxygenation due to poor breathing habits or lack of exercise can lead to a buildup of lactic acid, further aggravating arthritis symptoms. Barbara O'Neill stresses that an alkaline lifestyle, through diet, hydration, stress management, and physical activity, can significantly reduce the inflammatory burden on joints and promote better overall health. She also explains that old injuries or traumas to joints are a major contributor to the development of arthritis later in life. Even seemingly minor injuries that occurred years ago can lay the groundwork for joint degeneration. When a joint is injured, the body's immediate response is inflammation as it attempts to repair the tissue. However, this inflammation, while essential for short-term recovery, can lead to long-term structural changes in the joint. Over time, the repeated occurrence of inflammation can erode cartilage, which is essential for cushioning and protecting the joint from wear and tear. As cartilage breaks down, the bones within the joint begin to rub against each other, which leads to the pain, stiffness, and swelling commonly associated with arthritis. The body retains a form of cellular memory of past trauma, meaning that even once the visible signs of an injury have healed, 
the body continues to store the effects of that trauma. This stored information can resurface in the form of chronic joint issues much later, sometimes years or even decades after the initial injury occurred. In particular, injuries that were never properly treated or rehabilitated can cause the joint to deteriorate more quickly as the body continues to function with misalignments or damaged tissue. The result is that even a seemingly mild or forgotten injury from the past can trigger the development of arthritis, affecting the mobility and function of the joint in later life. Arthritis from old injuries usually affects certain joints more often than arthritis caused by aging or autoimmune diseases, which can impact the body more widely. This localized damage happens because specific joints have been directly hurt, especially in people who have repetitive injuries, like athletes or those with physically demanding jobs. Over time, these joints become weaker due to ongoing inflammation, tissue damage, and instability, making arthritis more likely to develop. Plus, there is a critical, yet often overlooked role of genetic predisposition in the development of arthritis. While lifestyle factors like diet, exercise, and environmental influences are frequently discussed in managing or preventing arthritis, inherited factors remain a substantial contributor. Genetic predisposition can shape an individual's risk of arthritis in various forms, including osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, by influencing the immune system, joint structure, and cartilage health. Specific genes linked to inflammatory responses can be passed down, predisposing individuals to conditions where chronic inflammation plays a significant role in joint degradation. The genetic component of arthritis can manifest in several ways. Inflammatory forms of arthritis, such as rheumatoid arthritis, are often associated with genes that cause the immune system to mistakenly attack the body's own joint tissues, leading to chronic pain and damage. Osteoarthritis, on the other hand, may be influenced by genetic variations that affect the repair and maintenance of cartilage, the smooth tissue that cushions bones at the joints. Some people may inherit abnormalities in the production or breakdown of cartilage, which accelerates the wear and tear of joints, causing early onset osteoarthritis. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the importance of understanding one's family medical history as a tool for proactive management. If multiple family members are affected by arthritis, it's more than just a coincidence. Genetic patterns can significantly elevate the risk. And then comes one of the most important factors of our lifestyle, dietary choices, which play a significant role in the development and progression of arthritis, particularly through their impact on inflammation. She points out that certain foods, which are commonly consumed without awareness of their effects, can exacerbate inflammatory responses in the body, leading to increased joint pain and stiffness. All vegetables have an alkaline effect. For some people, though, there is an exception. And this is the nightshade group of vegetables, so we'll put them under the question mark. For some people, the nightshade group of vegetables have an acid effect. So that's your tomatoes, that's your capsicum. Eggplant. And the fourth vegetable in this family is potato. And I'm not referring to the sweet potato, which actually is not a potato, it's a yam. I'm referring to what the Fijians call the white man's potato or the Irish potato. All of these vegetables are part of the nightshade family. And it appears that if someone has an inflammatory condition in their body and they eat the nightshades, it increases the inflammation. Dr. Norman Chilvers, he wrote a book called The Chilvers Diet and the whole book's basically on the nightshades. And he shows how eliminating the nightshades when someone has, say, arthritis, can help to heal from arthritis. One major dietary trigger she identifies is the consumption of refined sugars and processed carbohydrates, which are linked to chronic inflammation. These substances spike insulin levels, leading to systemic inflammation, which can worsen the symptoms of arthritis. Additionally, Barbara O'Neill underscores the detrimental effects of trans fats, found in many processed and fried foods, as they contribute directly to inflammatory processes in the body. She also brings attention to dairy products, particularly those that are high in saturated fats, which can aggravate inflammation for some individuals, especially those with sensitivity to casein, the protein found in milk. Similarly, the excessive intake of omega-6 fatty acids, 
prevalent in many vegetable oils, is highlighted as a major contributor to inflammatory responses. Omega-6 fatty acids are commonly found in processed snacks, fast food, and margarine. And when consumed in large amounts, they disrupt the balance with omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory in nature. Moreover, gluten, found in wheat and other grains, can be a significant trigger for inflammation in those with gluten sensitivity or celiac disease. If those are not enough, environmental toxins, often overlooked, play a significant role in the development of arthritis, according to Barbara O'Neill. These toxins, which can be found in everyday environments, contribute to inflammation and joint degradation, exacerbating conditions like osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Common sources include heavy metals, such as lead and mercury, which can enter the body through contaminated water and food, particularly fish high in mercury content. Chemicals found in household products, including cleaners, pesticides, and plastics, often release volatile organic compounds, VOCs, that have been linked to autoimmune responses. Industrial pollutants are another major source of environmental toxins. Factories emit a range of harmful substances, including dioxins and furans, which can accumulate in the food chain and are known to cause systemic inflammation. Airborne toxins from vehicle emissions and industrial activities can also contribute to respiratory issues that indirectly affect joint health, highlighting the intricate connections between air quality and inflammatory diseases. Barbara O'Neill emphasizes the importance of reducing exposure to these harmful substances. Choosing organic produce can minimize pesticide ingestion, while using natural cleaning products can decrease the intake of toxic chemicals in the home. Installing air purifiers and ensuring proper ventilation can help mitigate indoor air pollution. Regular testing of household water for contaminants, especially in areas known for pollution, is essential in maintaining a toxin-free environment. But that's only the external environment. How about your internal bodily environment? I'm talking about hormonal imbalances significantly affecting women's susceptibility to arthritis, particularly post-menopause, when estrogen levels decline sharply. Barbara O'Neill explains that estrogen plays a vital role in keeping our joints healthy. It helps maintain strong cartilage, which is the tissue that cushions your joints and prevents bones from rubbing against each other. Estrogen also helps control inflammation, which is the body's response to injury or irritation. When estrogen levels drop, such as during menopause, the risk of developing osteoarthritis increases. This happens because low estrogen can lead to faster cartilage damage, making our joints more sensitive to inflammation. When our joints are inflamed, it can cause pain and stiffness, making it hard to move around comfortably. Hormonal changes can also impact the immune system, which is responsible for fighting off infections and diseases. After menopause, many women experience changes in how their immune system works. This can make autoimmune conditions, like rheumatoid arthritis, worse. In autoimmune arthritis, the immune system mistakenly attacks healthy joint tissues leading to further pain and discomfort. The connection between hormonal changes and joint health is complex. It involves many different processes in the body that contribute to inflammation and how we feel pain. Barbara O'Neill highlights that hormonal shifts can increase pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are proteins that promote inflammation and can lead to swelling in the joints. Additionally, during menopause, lower levels of progesterone can disrupt the balance of other hormones, this can worsen arthritis symptoms and may even lead to chronic pain conditions. Studies show that women with higher inflammation related to hormonal changes tend to experience more severe arthritis symptoms. Plus, hormonal shifts during menopause can reduce bone density, making women more likely to develop osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can make arthritis treatment more complicated. That's why monitoring hormone levels and making lifestyle changes, such as improving diet and exercising, can help reduce the negative effects of hormonal imbalances. And finally, Barbara O'Neill emphasizes that lifestyle factors play a significant role in the development of arthritis, particularly how sedentary behavior, poor posture, and repetitive motions contribute to joint deterioration. Sedentary lifestyles characterized by prolonged periods of inactivity, reduce circulation and increase stiffness in the joints, leading to an increased risk of joint degeneration.
The lack of physical activity can weaken the muscles surrounding the joints, diminishing their support, and making them more susceptible to injury and wear. Furthermore, engaging in repetitive motions at work, such as typing or assembly line work, can place excessive strain on specific joints, leading to overuse injuries and eventually arthritis. Poor posture exacerbates these issues by misaligning the body, which can create uneven stress on joints and surrounding structures. For instance, slouching while sitting can shift the body's weight forward, placing additional pressure on the lumbar spine and hips, which can lead to conditions like osteoarthritis over time. Dr. O'Neill highlights that many people may not recognize how these seemingly harmless daily habits, like sitting for long hours or maintaining improper body mechanics while lifting, can cumulatively impact joint health. Chronic inflammation is often the result of this neglect, as misalignment and repetitive stress can trigger the body's inflammatory response, further aggravating joint conditions. Moreover, the connection between body mechanics and joint health is crucial. Improper lifting techniques can damage ligaments and cartilage, setting the stage for arthritic changes. Dr. O'Neill notes that even light activities, when performed incorrectly or excessively, can lead to cumulative trauma. Additionally, lifestyle choices such as inadequate hydration and poor nutrition can influence the body's inflammatory processes, compounding the effects of mechanical stress on joints. As the body struggles to manage inflammation, cartilage can break down, leading to pain, swelling, and reduced mobility. It's important to be aware of how our daily habits affect our joint health. By making simple changes, we can improve our joint health and help prevent arthritis. And with arthritis, number one, you go on a highly alkaline diet. Lots of alkaline foods, because arthritis is an acid, loves an acid condition. Start taking large dose turmeric, even two to 3,000 milligrams a day of turmeric, to, that'll get the inflammation down. And great ginger, and put ginger poultices on the sore joints and start jumping. Leave because there's no jarring with that. It strengthens every, today it is the only exercise that strengthens every single cell in the body. Because you know what you're doing? You're defying gravity when you go up. And when you go up, you're accelerating. And when you come down, you're decelerating. So the jumping up and down. And if you have a little rebounder in your house and your grandchildren visit, guess where they'll be? Have you experienced any of these overlooked triggers in your life? What steps will you take to improve your joint health? And moreover, what remedies are you following to manage them? As Barbara O'Neill says, traditional medications as remedies often fail to work properly or while they reduce the problem, they create other issues with side effects. So, she prescribes some natural ways which are unmatched to address this without side effects. Click on this video to know about those life-changing methods. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to help others uncover these vital insights. See you soon.